ahead and get started. Welcome all for joining us for our next session of the WGCU at home learning um, that explores PBS learning media. We're so glad that you're here today as we dive into PBS learning more media even more. Um, we're going to be looking at the lesson builder tool and how that can help you as you're trying to finish out the school year with remote learning. Um, it's a really great feature on the website that allows you to assign things to the students in your class. You can send it out to them. And so we'll walk through that demonstration today. Um, but first, I do want to um, thank you all once again for all you're doing for the kids of Southwest Florida. Um, you guys are rock stars. I know I said it last time and I'll say it again. It's not easy and we know that. And that's why we've designed this series of quick to the point tutorials each Thursday at four o'clock that hopefully you'll pick up something that you can try in your practice for remote learning. You can share with your colleagues and maybe something that sticks and you think this is great and it works for me and that's what we hope. Um, so like I said, this is going to be about 20 minutes and we'll dive into one topic per week. So we hope you join us um, next week and the following week as well. We always want this tutorial to be as interactive as possible. I know we have a bunch of people, but please feel free to unmute yourself throughout the presentation and the demonstration uh, to ask a question, to throw an idea out to the group, but then also utilize the chat feature. I'm going to do my best to monitor that throughout our session today. If you have any questions, please um, certainly ask it in the chat and we can always follow up. Oops, sorry, follow up with that afterwards. Um, but we also want to know who you are, where you're coming from, what school you're working with, um, the grade levels. Again, it just helps us um, reach our community even more. And it helps us to kind of um, shout out to your school. So let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Stephanie Murray. I am an adjunct professor of educational technology, and I also work with WGCU to bring their ed tech, the PBS ed tech, to schools across Southwest Florida. And what was supposed to be in person is now virtual, which is wonderful because we can reach so many schools all at once. And the registration list says, I mean, there were people from all over the state, which is great. So we're so glad you found us and that you're joining us today. I do see people trickling in um, on the chat. So hi, Lucinda. Hi, Susan. This is great. And this allows us to kind of shout you out on the Facebook page. I just want to call your attention to the WGCU at home learning Facebook group. Um, it allows us to continue the conversation. So if we don't get to everything right here, or you have specific questions, you can interact with us via Facebook. So we encourage you to join that after our session today. And one more thing as we're um, following and people are joining in, we know that there's a lot of inequity right now as far as students having available tech, internet that works, um, you know, working with other siblings who might have to use the technology as well. With that in mind, WGCU and the PBS stations across Florida have created the at home learning channel. It's the regular PBS station that you'll find on the TV, but the schedule has been shifted. So throughout the day, all of the educational content you'll see here each week is presented via the shows. And then you as the teacher can refer to the WGCU website to find activities and lessons that accompany the theme of that program. So even if your kids might not have access to a device, you can certainly point them to our station, which is you know what we're known for, and they can certainly get some education throughout the day. So with that in mind, I see a few more. Hi, Mary from East Naples Middle. Welcome. Um, and Susan, this is great. We are going to dive in to PBS Learning Media. I'm going to start sharing my screen so we can walk through. So give me a moment as I shift over. Make sure it's there. Great. So welcome back. This is PBS Learning Media. As you recall, this site has thousands of resources for you, teachers, for teachers by teachers. A lot of it is media based, interactives, all on the PBS content. Um, so you know it's trusted and it's useful. You know, you can send kids to YouTube. You can send them a link to watch a video and do a lesson. But it's the wild, wild west. Um, at least here, you know that there's no ads. 
They're not going to be um, attached to another video. Everything's going to be education based. Um, as you remember, there's a ton of subjects on here, everything spanning K through 12. So you'll see the one subject you teach. Um, there's a resource for you. There's also PD as well. We talked last week about how you can search by grade and then by standard. I'm already logged in. I encourage you if you haven't joined PBS Learning Media, it is free up in the um, right hand corner. I'm logged in, you'll see, but there will be a sign up button and all it asks is for your name, your email address and your zip code. And the reason it asks for your zip code is so that it can tailor the content to you as a teacher in Florida. So all the standards that will pop up with the resource or a video will be Florida, which is great. All right, so let's dive into the lesson builder tool. Um, I'm a social studies person. I was a social studies classroom teacher, so that's where I'm going to go with this. But keep in mind, again, there's subjects for everyone. So this is just a, one example of how it can be used. I'm going to search by keyword. So instead of looking up here in the sections that you can search, I'm going to do um, FDR. Oops, second new deal. I'm going to pretend I want my kids to learn about Franklin Delano Roosevelt's second new deal. So you can see I typed it in in the search browser like you would any other browser and look 5000 results come in. Woohoo! Right? It's like online shopping. I think I mentioned you can be overwhelmed. So you can certainly narrow it down by grade or by subject um, or you can just kind of start digging in. I'm going to look at this one. It looks kind of interesting. Second new deal programs for the people. OK, it looks like this came from the Roosevelt series um, by Ken Burns. It's intended for grades six through 12 and it's a video. So it's pretty good to me. Um, I like that it has a transcript. So if you have students with special needs, there is a printable transcript there for you that you can have. It has some support materials some guided questions that you can ask. And once again, look at that. Those Florida standards are already attached to this because I am logged in with my Florida zip code. All right, this looks good. I'm going to build my lesson based on this resource and I've already favorited it. But if you hadn't, you could go simply to here and you hit that little heart. You love it. You want to save it. So where does that take you back up to my dashboard? This is kind of the teacher portal side of the website. Um, Here's the back end. Here's everything that I want to save, that I want to organize, that I want to use. Ah, and look, the first one coming up is that resource that I just favorited. Now you have two options here as far as building a lesson. Over on the left, you have kind of a navigation toolbar. Over on the right, you have some icons. They'll both take you to the same place. Um, I'm going to hit the lesson builder so we can just kind of dive through this. And look, three easy steps. So step one, you create your instructional slide. Step two, you build out the material, you attach the video content. And step three, you share and save. It really can't be easier um, as far as getting this to your students. So let's kind of do a mock build up. I'm going to just title this FDR. New Deal and today. So my concept is that I'm going to have them compare maybe the New Deal from back um, in the early 20th century to obvious happenings of today regarding the stimulus package, you know, whatever it might be. That's my title. My kids will see that. Then it's going to add um, some instructions. This is where you can kind of walk them through. I'll put something simple. Watch the video and answer the following question. Just for time's sake, you might want to build it out more, but at least you get a lot of characters to work with. You can kind of walk them through it. And then it's pretty easy. You want to add your slide. So right here you can select the slide type. There's a media slide, a question slide and a text slide. I'm going to start with the media because that's where my lessons build upon and they make it super easy. All you have to do right here is click add new media. It pops up a window and it gives you three different options. You can import it from PBS Learn Media. You can add it from your device or you can drag and drop files from your computer. One nice thing about this, and I want you to keep this in mind, if you find a video on here that you want to supplement with maybe a video you've created or an activity you already have, it allows you to merge the two, which is really great. 
So for our purposes, I'm going to hit PBS Learning Media. Here it allows you to search either the entire site, and I could go through my search again, but since I've already favored it, look, there's my video already available for me. So I'm going to click that. Yep, this is the one, and I'm just going to hit Add to Slide. So it's already starting to build out my lesson. It's imported the video, and now I can go ahead and add my question or my assignment for the kids to do. So I'm going to do a question slide. Remember, the intent is that they'll watch the video and then they'll answer a follow up question. And so I can kind of decide what do I want that to look like? It gives you a few choices. Fill in the blank, multiple choice, short answer, true or false, or essay. And for this, I'm going to make it an essay question. We'll just make it um, after viewing the video. Compare how the New Deal um, how the New Deal compares that's again to today's stimulus plan. You can again go on more. You can have them debate. You can um, add references, add outside sources. But essentially, I want them to, in a long answer, up to 3,000 or 500 words, I want them to answer a question based off that video. And that's it. That's really all you have to do. You can certainly add more slides. You can add a few videos so they can kind of watch a few altogether related around the topic. Maybe it's about. Um, the planets, you can have one video per planet. Maybe it's about a math concept and you can have a couple sample videos. Um, it's really up to you how long you want to make the lesson. But for our purposes, we'll keep it nice and simple. I'm going to hit this check mark. Yes, I've agreed to the terms. And I'm going to save it and assign it. If you just hit save, it'll be in your dashboard, always there for you. You can go back and edit it. But I want to show you how to assign it to your students. So it gives me two choices. One is a quick assign. Essentially, what you would do would be to copy this code and send it out to your students or the link as well. You can copy it. That can be through an email. Maybe you use another system like Google Classroom. You know, you can send them the link and they'll be able to do it. Otherwise, you can assign to a class. Um, I'm going to just show you how to do that. We walked through classes last week and I'm just going to give you a brief kind of background. I created a class on here, which essentially means I sent out a link to my students, unquote students, and all they had to do was on the student side of this website, log in, and they're connected to my classroom. It makes it really easy. So I'm going to hit Session two, that's the one I just created for this one. Hey, there's my mock student. Um, yeah, and I'm going to add that student and hit assign. And I'm just going to review it. Yep, I have this is session two. This is the correct students. I'm going to hit OK. And voila, my lesson is created and it's out there live for my student to complete. Um, I want to flip this over. I'm going to take you to another browser because I want to show you what the student side looks like that way you can kind of have an idea. So let me share. Um, OK, so this is the student side. You can imagine your students have now gone to PBS learning uh, media dot org slash student, and this is what they're going to see up in this right hand corner enter code and that's where you can enter that quick code for your lesson or a class code and assignment code anything that it, you want to send directly to them they can simply add it in there once they've joined your class again that's just through a simple link and they sign up you don't necessarily have to send out that code once they log into the site they'll already see it there i'm going to go to my assignments i'm imagining i'm a student okay I'm going to refresh. Oh, I need to refresh. Sorry. And look, I have something waiting for me. You see that marker? It indicates that my teacher has assigned me a new lesson. I'm going to click it. Oh, here it is. FDR 
New Deal and Today. I can drop it down. I can see that the teacher, me, assigned it today. There's my teacher's name. There's the class that I'm a part of. And here's my instructions. So I'm going to hit start just so we can see what it looks like for the student end. The nice thing is the user face is pretty simple. Um, you know, depending on the abilities of your students to navigate things, they keep it pretty clean. There's not a lot of flashy ads. There's not a lot of flashing colors. Um, and that's just, you know, cognizant of the ability of students and where they land. Um, like I said, this was pretty simple. So here's the title. There's those instructions, right? Very simple. And then I'm going to hit next slide. There's the video that my teacher assigned to me. I can easily watch it right on this website. And then I'm going to hit next slide. And there's the question that she wants me to answer. It allows you to type right in here. No, up to 500 words, 3000 characters, and then hit submit. Finish questions. I'm done. Look, I finished my assignment. My teacher's going to be so happy. If only it was so easy, right? Um, back on the teacher side. I'm going to head back to that teacher because I want it to show you what it looks like for you once the students have turned in their assignment. So let me get back here. I'm back in the teacher. Here's that lesson. Here's my session, and it shows me a roster of all the students enrolled in that class. They've completed it, which is great, and I can then go in and look at the different results and look at the things that the students have turned in. Um, again, this is all free. It's a tool that's just available for you. Um, you're allowed to kind of add as many content as you want. You can add a couple videos. You can add a bunch of questions. And again, it's all free, 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 which is great. Um, it's just a really nice content management system. I did want to mention, I know a lot of people use Google Classroom. When you go to your classes, and I want to reiterate this one more time, you can create a class very simply just by entering the class name, my name, and then sending out the code to the students or you can import from Google Classroom. So if you already have Google Classroom that you work with your students as an interface, it allows you to just sync up with that. Um, I've already done that with this one. This was a sample one. And all of the contacts you have there will automatically be uploaded to here. So it kind of is a nice way if you already have that content management system, use it to your advantage, right? Make it easy for yourself. We have a few minutes left. Um, I just want to remember that next Thursday we're going to dive into the quiz maker and the puzzle maker the puzzle builder as two other features that this website allows you to do um, but I did want to open it up we does anyone have any questions on the lesson builder tool adding a student or building a classroom let me just check back um, I have a question yes please on your import a class from Google Classroom, are yes. there any limits to the size of the class? Um, no, not as far as I know. I mean, how many are you talking? Well, at this point, our classes are based by grade level. So there's 150 students in each class. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, I've never heard that there is a limit. Um, this is David talking, right? Yes. Yeah, certainly. Um, I want to just double check. Um, like I said, as far as I know, there is no limit, um, but I don't want to steer you wrong. If that's not the case, I'll certainly follow up. Um, I think we have your contact information from the registration um, and say that, you know, there is a limit, but go forth with the idea that there is no limit as far as Google Classrooms. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? 
All right, I think we are almost right at our 20 minute mark. Um, just please join us next Thursday. We're gonna dive into a few extra tools. Um, and in the meantime, join us on the Facebook group. If you have follow up questions or if you try this out, let us know. We wanna um, hear how well it works for you. And um, we wanna be here as your partner as you're trying to do virtual learning. So thank you all from WGCU. We'll see you next Thursday at 4 p.m. Thank you.